services and the Lord will surely bless you. We want to appreciate um, the hoodwind and sample. They did amazing grace and a shelter in a time of storm for us. The choir is just sang just a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Prayer works. So now is our turn to sing um, and we'll be singing uh, together. The first song Brother Godwin will give us and then uh, you give us the other songs that follow. Our first song will be SSNS 682. 682. Faith is the victory. Amen. We're going to take verses one, uh, verse one, everybody. Verse two, our ladies will take that. Verse three, our uh, men. And then verse 4, everybody, and all of us will join in the chorus.
together. chorus we're going to sing out it may be new to a few of us but we'll be able to take it through together my hope is in you secret to it. Let Jesus come into your heart. That'll be our next song.
prayer is going to be CGS 124. We're going to use two different tunes for this. So we'll just follow the <coughs> journey, and that will be fine. so grateful for, for, for a time like this where we can eat and dine at your table Lord we, we appreciate your presence Lord ever through the start of this can meeting we give our hearts in praise to your holy name Lord once more Lord we are here Lord through this journey of faith Lord and we pray this evening that you will increase our faith Amen. where faith is missing Lord that you will start a journey of faith in the hearts of many souls this evening Lord we pray, Lord, that um, throughout the rest of the service that your spirit will be manifested in such a mighty way, Lord. During the testimony service, come down, O oh God. During the rest of the singing, Lord, choir singing, we, whichever way, Lord, we just want your Holy Spirit to manifest itself in such a mighty way, Lord. And when the word of life comes out, Lord, feed us till we want no more. Lord, we are hungry for the word of life. We pray that you will fill our souls, O oh God. And at the altar service, as we've experienced through these past days, Lord, let it be such a, a, a flood of streams of joy, Lord, that people will pray their way through, Lord, to salvation, to sanctification, Lord, to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord, to the healing of their sick bodies, Lord, to lots and lots of um, answers to prayers, Lord. And above all, Lord, we just want to sit in heavenly places and continue to, Lord, fill those heavenly beasts, Lord, so that we one day, Lord, Lord, as we anticipate heaven, Lord, that one day we'll, we, we will be with you, Lord, for where we'll be forever and ever, Lord. Bless the remainder of the service, for we pray in Jesus' name. Once again, you're welcome to our revival service. May God bless you. Uh, just a few reminders about uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're taking a break, 
and you can imagine how fast the week is going. But uh, God is not taking a break, so we might as well make the most of our presence here. This place will still be open. Should you be hungry for more, as we heard from the prayer, just come and have time to talk to God, and God will answer your prayer. Amen. Also tonight, before we talk about tomorrow, we are here now. We want to make the most of that time to pour out our hearts to God, and God will answer every prayer. Um, at 10 o'clock tomorrow, we have our packed lunch. As we announced in the morning, just make sure you take your own and leave the rest for everyone else uh, to take their own too. And then um, the young people have arranged through their youth lead, I'm told, they will have a film show at uh, 12 noon. So all young people will take note of that. And then at uh, quarter past four, we have another, I would say, a video presentation of the Israel visit that was done by a group of about 44 earlier um, in the year. That's around end of May. I want you to give you a taste of what Israel is all about. I was part of that group. And uh, what I've told many people so far, because it was my first time to be in Israel, is Every Christian needs to go there. Um, then at 8 o'clock, we will have our revival and evangelistic service, as we are having now. Uh, just to let you know that I've been told by the ushers, some money have been found. Obviously, we won't tell you how much, but if you lose some money, just go to the ashes, they'll be able to help you. Thank God we have Christians. Um, we will continue our service with the first um, uh, female quartet, which is going to be uh, given to us. And then after the female quartet, we will have uh, two minute testimonies. Just take note of that. If you want to testify, just uh, stand up, and then those with mics will be able to see where you are. And um, just tell us the victories, what God did for you. Now, that's what people want to hear. If you start talking about when it happened, how it happened, you'll find before you know it, two minutes is gone. But if you just shout the victories, two minutes is a lot of time to give your testimony. Um, after the testimonies, we'll have the uh, special song, which will be, Oh Yes, I Know. It's a male voice. Apologies, I think I mixed up things here. The first special is a choir song. He was there all the time. Apologies for that. And then after that... Uh, Choir song, you was there all the time. We will have the testimonies followed by the last special and then the word of exhortation from uh, Sister Messi Neke. Uh, Ade, Ade, she is our leader for our uh, island group.
quickly that way. Um, I want to thank God that he was there all the time. I want to thank God that at the age of 14, the Lord saved my soul, sanctified me, and filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Um, it's not that I've been faithful or true, but God was there all the time. Even when I went astray or I didn't do things right, he was there to correct me, to bring me back in line. I am grateful to God for that. If not for his salvation, I don't know where I'll be. I thank God especially for um, my job. You know, when God provides, he works things out. Amen. When I finished Juni, I spent two years without a job, did different things, volunteer, but God gave me a job. Amen. But you know what, as God plans, after 19 years, I got made redundant on the 11th of this month, just like that, and it was, okay, fine. Most people at work were asking me, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. Because I knew God was in control. And you know, as God would have it, within two days, I had a second interview. From an interview I had in February, within two days after that, by the Saturday, I have another job. I mean, God knows how to provide. I have not done enough for him. Just keep praying for me. Pray for my siblings. Um, you know, God has been there. It's been... Three years now, on the 10th of this month, since my mum passed. 13 years it will be in November with my dad. But God has been there for us. He's been my mother, my father. has been everything for me and my siblings. We've never lacked anything. When we did need something, out of mysteriously, God will provide. I will encourage our young people, please, serve God. You will not lose out. God will definitely take care of you. Yes. Keep praying for us and I pray, as I pray for you. God bless you. Thank God for, this, for having the opportunity to praise his soul in him this evening. I thank God for saving my soul. Give me my three experiences. I glorify his name. The reason why I'm standing up this evening to give the testimony regarding my granddaughter. This time last year, we were in the hospital. I see you. She was hospitalized for six or eight weeks, but in ICU for more than 19 days. She was there for 19 days on life support. And the doctor said that there's no more hope for her. They said that it has been right off. They said there is going to, she's going to have surgery, but if she has the surgery, it's 5%, 95% nothing. So it's better. Let nature take place. Wow. Then one of my daughters said, no, I have somebody in heaven that will heal her. He said, who, who is that person? The doc, one of the doctors said, who is that person? He said, I have God. He said, who is God? He said, my God in heaven will heal this girl. When they said, after the story, they said, oh, we are sorry. We try our best, but we are sorry. There's nothing we can do. Will take place. Even if you take her to a private hospital, you just want to waste your money. We've you, you exhausted all our resources. We don't want to waste NHS money any longer. We started praying. Children of God rally land us. This time last year, during UK camp meeting, but God answers our prayer. Amen. Because they said that the doctor, the specialist hospital at Birmingham General Children's Hospital, said that this child for the next six months. They cannot even discharge, but she was discharged within six weeks. Amen. So they extend that the doctors, when they saw her, they said, wow, it has never been done. All what they discovered was that people are always coming to come and pray for this child. I glorify God. The rest of my life, I want to serve. I thank God for the salvation of my soul, for satisfying me, and give me the baptism of Holy Ghost and Fire. 2019, when my children came back home, from Kamiti. They told me that, Mama, if you are not going with us to Kamiti, we are not going again. And I told them to go and pray. And I start to pray. I thank God that God make way for me this year. Me and my children will come for this year Kamiti. Glory be to the name of God Almighty. A few weeks to this Kamiti, I went through a hospital, hospital uh, procedure. And I thank God, God quick my recovery. And God heal me. Glory be to the name of Almighty God. I want to thank God this evening um, about last year's... 
I want to thank God this evening. I thank God for the privilege to come to camp meeting last year. And I remember um, at the last um, revival service, um, the minister that was ministering said we should tarry in prayers. Um, I could not come to the mother's bench because um, I had my kids with me. So myself, my wife, and my kids, we went to a room around here, and we just tarried in prayers, and we're saying, Lord, the minister has asked us to tarry in prayer. Today is the last day of this last revival service of this camp meeting. And to the glory of God, all the prayer requests that we asked at that prayer in that corner of that room, God answered everything. Um, even during that camp meeting, um, we, were, we were worried in our mind. And God just sent a minister to us. He never knew us. He never knows us in this, in this camp meeting. He just called us and said, um, the Spirit of God asked him to talk to us. And he spoke to us and he had laid all our fears and we, we had peace of mind and when we're leaving the camp meeting we were testifying, thanking God. I came, I'm just thanking God that all the prayer requests that we asked there because they were great things that we were asking. Things that um, even as I was asking it, I knew that it was impossible. But I was just asking and uh, to the glory of God, all those impossibilities were, they became possible. Praise God. Amen. Of God, this evening I just want to thank the Lord for everything He has been doing for me and those that He will do. He has been there for me. Yeah. I, I just want to uh, start by telling people how I came to meet God. He sought me, He sought me, and He found me. Yeah. It was a day that He told me to go to Apostolic Faith Church. A woman is waiting for me. I quote. So I tried to wriggle myself out of that, and a song came. All of that ground is seeking sound. I battled with this message for a month. I came here, I'm saved, sanctified, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I praise the Lord. Not, I, I haven't achieved anything. I haven't done anything for God. I'm just starting. I just want to give him glory to tell people that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Yeah. And, he, and he, he, with God, all in, all in, yeah. till I see him face to face. I want to thank God this evening because I'm really grateful for all he's done for me. As he was singing this song, um, I was just reflecting on how much Jesus has actually been there all the time, waiting patiently in the line of everything else that I put before him, wrong people, wrong things, but for all of that, God was there waiting so patiently. I thank God that even though I got stuck in routine and just doing things for the sake of doing things, during the pandemic, God really opened my eyes and like cleared all my distorted views of him. And in a time when the world was full of so much chaos, he just put a lot of peace in my heart. And I'm so grateful for that. And even sometimes I feel like God brought that whole pandemic just to get my attention. But I'm just so grateful for all that he's done. Um, I just pray that I continue to serve him. Uh, okay, let's have uh, Brother Fadairo with the mic, our sister here, and uh, two behind me. Let's do one minute each. Amen. 60 seconds, please. I know the name of the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness. Um, if you don't have to be here, perhaps the announcer will have gone around that either I've been crippled or I'm dead. I returned from work early in the morning to see how much I would eat and then I went into the dark to have a shower. I tried to grab it, and the next thing I know was I felt just like that with all my weight. And my nose hit the uh, WC, and I shouted. Perhaps, uh, you know, my, my wife was upstairs. I shouted if she could come down. Um, but what happened is the Lord helped me. Amen. I cleansed the blood, got up, eat and slept, and the, the next evening, I went back to work. Yeah. And here I am, no stroke, no anything. Yeah. May the name of the Lord be praised. Yeah. What 
I want to thank God this morning for all that God has done for me. The Lord saved me when I was 14 years, and since then, the Lord has been directing my life. I thank the Lord because since he saved me, he has been directing me, and he, any prayer I request from him, he answers all my prayers. Recently, the Lord moved us to Germany, and immediately we got there. My husband became terribly sick, and I didn't know anybody in Germany. I didn't know any church in Germany. I was just all alone with the children, and he was in ICU. You. And I prayed, and I, I sent prayer requests to Ghana, and they prayed for me. I requested anointing oil, um, um, handkerchief from Portland, and they sent it to us. And I placed it on him with faith, and I cried to the Lord, and the Lord raised him up. Yeah. I thank the Lord so much. Recently, my contract was about to end, and uh, that means that I ha we have to leave Germany. And I started praying. <laughs> I had to write a, a, a grant. A grant. My professor called me and told me that, I mean, I know you are ambitious, but just forget it. And I said in my heart that my God will do it. And you know, everybody was rejected, but God gave me that grant. And I praise this. I thank God this evening for all he has done for me. I thank him from my youth. He's taken care of me. He saved me. Um, sanctify me and he filled me with his Holy Spirit. From time to time, he comes down to renew my experiences. I'm grateful because I wouldn't be here now one week to the camp at uh, Portland. Um, a car almost drove into me with my grandchildren. I heard the Spirit of God says, hit the next car. As I moved to hit the, the next car in obedience, God carried my car and put on the cap. And that's how we escaped. That's why I'm here today. I'm so happy I could use violin again. I couldn't play violin for some, some years now. But God came and healed me. God has done so much that I, I, this one minute is not enough, but I just want to thank you. I thank the Lord tonight Amen. because the Lord is good. Yes. I thank him and expressing my gratitude before him. Firstly, he saved my soul. Amen. The fact that I was born in a Christian home did not make me a Christian. Amen. I confess my sin. Jesus saved me. Amen. He sanctified me Amen. and baptized me with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember when it was at the age to marry, I told God, I said I wanted a man that we will be serving God together. Amen. Do you know God answered our prayers? Amen. And he blessed us with children Amen. that are serving God with us. Amen. I bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Of recent, we traveled to Portland. The Lord took us there. Amen. It was a tedious journey, but the Lord took us there Amen. and brought us back safely. Amen. You see, I think purposely tonight again is uh, uh, an answer to prayers. Amen. Jesus answers prayers. Amen. When we commit it unto him, yes is able to do it. That which he has said, he will do it. I bless the name of the Lord. Children of God, pray for me. And before we listen to the last special, uh, one of the announcements is a reminder for those that we said uh, should meet at 11 behind this uh, hall here uh, for the first time, the first time as to the, uh, this come meeting. They're supposed to gather tomorrow at 11 a.m. So all first-timers, as we announced earlier on in the morning, and if anyone, someone is missing their phone, so if someone has seen a phone somewhere that is not theirs, they should please pass it on to the ashes or to the camp office.
John chapter 3, from verse, uh, verse 16 and 17. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Jesus saves. Yes. Jesus saved me. Amen. He has saved many seated yeah. here this evening. Yeah. Yeah. If you can see the male choir singing. You can see the joy of salvation on their faces. They were singing that song with confidence because they had an encounter. And I believe that if you believe tonight, Jesus will save you too. Because Psalm 3 verse 8 says, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. No man can save you, but Jesus saves. Yes. If you are leaving the camp meeting, make sure you go with Jesus. Yes. Because, you know what? Let's uh, read some um, people, just two people that had an encounter with him. Encounter of salvation. Um, the first person we are going to talk about is this woman, uh, the Samaritan woman at the well. In John chapter 4, the Bible says in verse 4, it says, And he must needs go through Samaria. Yeah. Jesus left, like diverted. He was going to Galilee. But he said, I will pass through Samaria. 
and he went right there to the well and waited. The choir sang it. Say, Jesus is always there waiting. Yeah. Amen. He's always waiting for us. Yeah. And when the woman came to, to the well, this was a woman that has been confused with religion. And Jesus could see through her that this is somebody who has been thirsting for the truth and the living water. But she needed to meet Jesus, who is the giver of this living water, for her own salvation. And I just love Jesus for that. That he will go all the way. He will, he will, you know, he, he, he went all the way to save me. Jesus will go all the way to save anybody. He went all the way to save this woman. And they started having the um, communication, chatting. They were chatting. And as they were talking, the heart of this woman, she started talking about a confusion. And Jesus was answering her. What are you confused about? You can bring it to the Lord. Yes. And he will give you the answers. Yes. If, you're, if you're sincere, just say it to him. He will give you the answers. Amen. And tonight, Jesus must needs go through Kevin Lee. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Because since the beginning of the camp meeting, we've heard that we need to have faith in God. Yes. Jesus knew that we are going to be here. Yes. So he's been here before us. Yes. Because he has been blessing people. Yes. That's why we know he's here. Yes. He's been here waiting to bless us. Yes. So he must needs go through Kevin Lee. Yes. That's why we are here. Yes. He has been waiting for us. Yes. So we believe that he's going to save tonight. Yes. Amen. Amen. When Jesus started talking to that woman, because she was sincere. She was telling Jesus how she really felt. She was telling Jesus the confusion she had with religion. I am this, I am that. Jesus said, I, what I have for you is the living water. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. If you drink it, you don't need to be coming here anymore. He said, give me that water. Amen. Jesus needed to open our understanding. Yeah. May God open your understanding tonight. Yeah. As Jesus opened our understanding, she never had to kneel down to pray. It was just communication. Yeah. Yeah. And right there, something happened to her. Yeah. Something good will happen to you tonight. Yeah. When she finished, in the midst of it, she ran back to tell the people, to tell the city, our city, our people, that someone is here. The Messiah is here. Yeah. God is going to do that for you too. Yeah. <clears throat> because we are all here now for camp meeting. Yeah. When Jesus saves you, he's going to give you the opportunity to go back to your yeah. own city, yeah. to your town, yeah. to your neighborhood, your school, your place of work, and tell them that I have met the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Something good will happen to you. Amen. We have a song. He says, we have heard the joyful sound. Jesus says, Jesus says, spread the tidings all around. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward, it is our Lord's command. Give the winds a mighty voice. Let the nations now rejoice. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This is our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. That will be your own song of victory tonight. You know, your purpose of coming to camp meeting is not only for your own salvation. Because I said Jesus came to Kevin Lee. 
and brought you to Kefili, not only for your own salvation, but for the salvation of so many other people. I pray that you will be saved tonight so that the purpose God has brought you shall be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name because he wants to make you a mouthpiece. He only needed to save one person in that city of Samaria to win so many souls. That was, you know, it baffled me. Jesus only needed to save that woman for a whole city. Are you the person that Jesus has been looking for? To save your family. Are you? I'm going to read the other accounts. Paul and Silas were in prison. Let's read Acts chapter 16. Verses 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's burns were loosed. Amen. Paul and Silas were in prison, and they were bound. So, though they were not in prison for the, they were in the prison for the right reasons. Right. You know when you say you, 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 <laughs> they were in the prison because they were preaching Christ, yeah. not because they were criminals. No, no. Right. So that's why I say right, yeah. not the wrong reasons. But you see, God had a plan. For making sure Paul and Silas were in that prison at that particular time. Um, so before we go to the reason, let's see what God did through um, Paul and Silas there. They said they were, they were in prison. Do you know many people have been imprisoned by the devil? Prisons, when, when we look at prison, things that hinders you from being what you, what you are supposed to be. They, they were chained down. That's bonds. They were in bondage, you know, physically. But many are in bondage spiritually. Bondage of sin. Chained down by the enemy of their soul. He has seen their future. He has seen the glory ahead of them in Christ. But he will be like, like, no, they must be bound. Because if they are bound, they won't be able to achieve that. The the glory of God will not be be revealed in their life. But you know what? If you can praise God. Yes. They said, what what were they doing? They said they were singing. And they were praising God. Whatever those praisings. Whatever has held you in prison, as you believe and praise God and sing tonight, those chains are going to drop. Because Jesus had to come to Kevin Lee. Because he needed to break some chains. Some people had to be released from prison. Prison of diseases. Prison of failure. Prison of sickness. Prison of backsliding, disappointment, distress, anything, whatever prison it may be, they need to fall. They need to be opened. Chains are to be dropped because our Jesus is a miracle worker. He does signs and wonders. You just need to believe. Amen. Believe. Praise Him. Sing. Rejoice. Believe. And those chains shall be broken today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 107 verse 16 says, For he had broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. He had already won the victory for you. You only need to believe. Do your part and you will receive. (coughs) In the mighty name of Jesus. When people are in prison, there will be gatekeepers, prison keepers. They are to keep watch that the prisoners must not escape. 
So there was a gatekeeper, a prison keeper at the door to prevent prisoners, to prevent Paul and Silas. But they were already in chains anyway. They wouldn't want to run away. But still, they, would, they still have to put the uh, prison keeper there. So in that account, the prison keeper was terrified, wasn't he? Yeah. The Bible says in verse 26, and suddenly Amen. there was a great earthquake. Yes. If there was an earthquake here, of course, there will be commotion. He said, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. I don't know what you're expecting yeah. when it comes to this prison because the foundations of those prisons must shake. Yeah. You have to begin to say it to yourself. Yeah. The foundations of whatever has kept me in prison must be shaking. Yeah. The Bible says, and the, all the doors, immediately all the doors, yeah. all the doors will be open tonight yeah. and everyone's bars will be loose yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. For the prison keeper, it was a different story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For Spoil and Silas, it was a special story. Yes. But for the prison keeper, it was, it was a story of fear. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. He thought Paul and Silas had escaped. And in Acts 16, 27 downwards, we, re we read about the salvation of that prison keeper and his family. The Bible says he came to Paul and Silas. To, he came. He was looking for them. He wanted to kill himself. He was trembling. But they told him, no, don't kill yourself. We are here. Yeah. We are children of God. Yeah, we don't need to run. Yeah. Because we, we came here. I told you. They were there for a reason. Yeah. Even though they did not even know why. But Jesus brought them there for a reason. Yeah. Oh my God. That was, a, ah. Jesus brought them there because of that prison keeper. The prison keeper needs to have an encounter with Jesus. So some children of God had to be positioned in that place. So that that man must hear about that salvation. Amen. You have been positioned here today. Right. Ministers of God have been positioned here. Yeah. They have been telling you yeah. that Jesus says yeah. that you only need faith. Yeah. The uh, Samaritan woman, uh, the woman at the well, she did not pray for many days. It was that same day. Yes. Yes. So you could get your salvation that same day. Yeah. You only need to believe what you have been hearing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So... <laughs> Jesus positioned Paul and Silas to save the prison keeper for his salvation. And not only for his own salvation, but for the salvation of his household as well. Glory be to God. I'm going to read verse 29 to 31. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. What, what must I do to be saved? Is that your own question too? Is that the question in your heart? What must I do? Many people are here tonight. They have come. Parents come with their children. Young people left their studies. People left their job just to be at camp meeting. Because you know that Jesus must need, must need to pass carefully. Because you have heard that Jesus says, I pray that your faith Amen. will work for you tonight. Amen. Paul 
and Silas said to him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. The same word for you tonight. Amen. There's no, it's not, there's no, it's not about, it's not a magic. There's no two words about it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he can save you. Believe that he can deliver you. And thou shalt be saved. Jesus says. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says. For the grace of God. That bringeth salvation. Hath appeared to all men. So the grace is available for everybody. Without any exception. You only need to come to Jesus. Just as you are. That man had that. The jailer had it. And he came. He came. And he was saved. And the, the, the declaration to him is that. You will be saved with your house. So. You have come. With your family. You have come with your children. You have come with your cousins, niece, what, whoever you have brought. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved with your household. So it's not only about you. It's about everything that, everything that surrounds you. Everyone that, that surrounds you. Jesus will save you. Come with sincerity of heart. Come and say, Jesus, what you want. Come and surrender your heart. Apply the blood. He will save you. As we sing the closing song, the altar is open. Father, as we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.